Hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be here with you today, and I'm so happy you're here to, to join us. While I get to chat with one of my newest artists, you're going to love seeing her art. We have a giveaway of one of her gorgeous um, napkin towel thingies. It's so beautiful. I don't even know. It's like a cloth thing that's so pretty. And um, and we're going to ask her lots of good questions. We've got the chat open, so don't hesitate to pop open the chat. I just want to show you this that came in from uh, one of our artists did the cover for this, Mara Penny. It's just such a beautiful cover and her lettering. You know, I was, always talk how important lettering is. <clears throat> So with no further ado, ado, let us welcome Kay, Kay Wolfersberger. So if you want to pop on your screen, your video and your unmuting. Good. Hi. Hi. Hi, Lilla. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad you're here. And what are they? Tea towels? Yes, kitchen towels. Yep. I watched the intro, but you know, who cares? It's just how it looks. Um, yeah, they're gorgeous. So that will be a giveaway. I'm so glad you're here. Me too. Um, Kay is, uh, I discovered her in my maths classes, my Make Art That Sells classes. So happy to see so many people here. Type in where you are. Yay, Riley's here. I'm always happier when Riley's here. I, I was going to call you Riley and say, you're coming today, aren't you? <laughs> because we're teaching a, a toy class together in July. And um, I also want to welcome our boot camp people. Make sure that you get to see this. It'll be very motivating. So Kay, you, let me introduce Kay. She lives in Savannah, Georgia. And I just realized today that she was valedictorian at SCAD, Savannah College of Art and Design, in graphic design and fibers, double major. Very cool. Um, and she has a gorgeous Etsy shop, but don't go now, but it's Kay <laughs> Wolfersberger, not Burger, Perger, P, Wolfersberger on Etsy. And um, don't go, stay here because <laughs> you're going to be seeing her work. And we're going to, I'm going to ask her all kinds of good questions. And let's dive in with some questions. First sure. of all, what I want to know is how did you go from graphic design to illustration? I know so many graphic designers want to be illustrators. And why did you want to be an illustrator and how did you do it? Uh, that's such a good question. And like so many graphic designers turned illustrator, it was a winding road. Uh, but in a nutshell, I my family was really supportive of me studying art. And so when I finished high school, I went to the community college there in Pensacola, Florida, where I grew up mm -hmm. and earned an associate of applied science degree in graphic design. I transferred to SCAD and uh, study and finished my BFA there at SCAD and then went into the industry, the advertising agency industry after I graduated. And after about a year, I realized it wasn't a good fit for me. It didn't feel right um, and the traditional job hours were draining and for me that made for bad art output. And all this meanwhile, I just loved illustration but I didn't understand the in that industry or how to get into it or what kind of work you needed to make. Mm -hmm. um, and I ended up um, shaking it up a little bit and go going and went back to SCAD to obtain the second BFA in fibers. And I could get huh. a, yeah, I did a studio production concentration, which was basically small batch handmade collection. So you work in your studio, you make the product, and you sell to retailers. Uh, but when I finished that degree, I, the school, uh, the university offered me a position in their product development division. What that was, was an internship program where we would take student ideas and make them into real products. So at this point, I was still doing graphic design, um, but this program was more, it was run like a small business. So I was able to experience uh, everything that goes into a product launch. So the wow. creation of the idea, the manufacturing, and sometimes we had to work with manufacturers in China to get the appropriate price point and marketing and packaging. So I learned so much in that role. 
But even then I realized that that traditional job setting uh, was still draining and I still wanted to pursue illustration. So it was scary, but I left that, that job mm. and started freelancing. And that uh, went really well, it was freelance graphic design. And I was like, okay, this will get me closer to illustration, right? Um, and I was reading, so I was trying to learn the industry and I came across Julia Rothman, the illustrator, her website. She had a great page of how to become an illustrator. Mm. And one aspect that you could, one way you could become an illustrator is to gain an agent and that link went to your website, Lilla, Lilla Rogers Studio. Oh, that's so great of her. I love her. Yeah, I know. Her work is so great. Yeah. Um, and then that led me to Make Art That Sells. And then they were holding this competition called Global Talent Search. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll just enter this thing, win it, and then I'll be an illustrator. <laughs> well, I did not win it. <laughs> yeah, but it, and you've spoken on this before, Lilla, about, um, jealousy and how it can be information. And so losing <laughs> really uh, informed me about my drive and passion to keep going that direction to become an illustrator. Mm. And so fast forward, oh my gosh, like five, five six years later and uh, countless make art that sells classes. Um, and here we are now. And I, I had my eye on her like so many but she stuck with it. She got her work better and better. And we're going to see it. Not only is it just so delightful and gorgeous, it's, it's work appropriate. It, it solves problems, the needs of children's book illustration, of product, of lettering for cards, of decorative motifs. It, you know, when we want to take on an artist, we have to think about, well, first of all, do we love the work? That's baseline, that's a given. And we did, I mean, that's no brainer. But then is, can it get jobs? Can, do we think the work can get jobs to the best of our knowledge based on jobs we get in every day and see in the body of work that our artists produce? So, so that's kind of how we do it. And the work can be great, but if it's not appropriate, if it's not marketable, then that's a problem. So anyway, that really was. It's so interesting. So you took these courses yeah. and which and and you saw yourself grow. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. 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 And tell us about the growth process. Was it did you ever get frustrated in the beginning like this is never going to work or you have a really positive attitude? I mean, you thought you were going to win the global talent search. <laughs> Uh, and not having taken any classes. I love that about you. Um, there are like a thousand entrants. So, you know, it was not an easy competition. Um, so did, did you have insecurities or did you feel pretty confident? Were you driven? Were, did you know you're just going to do it? Like, what was your mindset? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, losing that competition, like I mentioned, I mean, it was pretty, I was like, what? How did I not win? <laughs> and in hindsight, I realized I still had a lot more room to grow. So I think over time, um, but yeah, it is, it is hard. It's frust frustrating, maybe, that you're not growing or um, getting better as fast as you may think you want. But looking back, I mean, it is just a process. And it was about showing up and and putting the time in and i think thinking with that mindset of i just i have to show up and thinking about your present time don't think about not i didn't think about like oh years from now what am i going to be like i just tried to show up every day oh. um take like for instance the courses with make art that sells um do all the assignments right and that like you've said this phrase before chip 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 Chip, chip, chip away. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so I clung to that mindset. And yeah, there, it, there were disappointments. Um, and I think it's really easy to think, oh, I'm not good enough or I'll never get better. But I realized recently that making art, and you usually hear this term in the finance world, but it's like got, it's compound interest. Over time, you're... What? Yeah, I, I just was like, this wow, is compound interest. Type that in, people. <laughs> so over time, you 
in the money world, you're putting a little bit aside of your money and then um, mm -hmm. the real growth of that money happens you know, later in life when you're ready for retirement. But the same thing happens with art. And thankfully, before you hit a retirement age. So yeah, right. Hopefully, it's exactly. yeah, while you're young yeah. or youngish. But there's no, you know, and I know there are people here like, well, I'm in my 40s and 50s. I didn't start my agency till I was 39. I didn't start mats till I was in my mid or late 50s. So, you know what? Age is a number, blah, 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 so on. But anyway, to pick that up, so what was your regular work practice, like your art practice? So you did all the assignments, you budgeted, ha I know you budgeted a good amount of time. I know you didn't wait to the last minute. I know you have a great work ethic. So what advice do you have for people? Sure. Um, and it, it, it's challenging. It was challenging to work full-time jobs and still try to develop an art practice. But I, thinking about this, I think it would be be brave. And bravery really is on a spectrum. Everyone's bravery looks different. So bravery could be you're buying your first fancy art pencil, or it could be you're starting your 500th art piece and it's going to be your masterpiece. So wherever, whatever stage you're in, I think you just have to remember to be your version of brave. I love that. Yeah, your version of brave. I love that. It's so true. And, and keeping your eye on the prize and staying so motivated, looking at work you love, looking at careers of people you love, you know, for those of you hearing Kay's story, and the reason why I'm pulling this out in her is because I know it'll be inspiring to so many of you too. watching these webinars with other artists and seeing um, how they've made it any time that that can inspire you and be like, yeah, I want that too. That was what really helped me when I was an illustrator. Like there wasn't the internet then. And my son is like, how did anyone live back then? <laughs> well, you would go to things like SVA, School of Visual Art, or, um, or Parsons would have like, um, a panel of artists and I'd go and I'd listen. Then eventually I became one of those artists on the panel, you know, but you, you want to be inspired as much as you can. It's really, that I think really, really helps. Yeah. Okay. My next question. So one of the great things about your portfolio, your body of work is you have kids books, you have lettering, you have home decor, you've got editorial you've got so many different things how did you make that happen how did you make all that map? oh sure i wish it was a more glamorous answer maybe it kind of is but i just took the make art that sells courses that's glamorous <laughs> i would mm. when ben and i lived in new york my husband ben we would go to coffee shops it was one of our favorite things and people watch and i would draw I put it, you put in the time and then you trust um, the process, which in this case for make art that sells, it's typically a warm up, like very not intimidating warm up, easy warm up. Um, and then, then uh, the assignments, mm -hmm. reacting to the assignments and you just keep doing that almost a formula, but not in a yeah. boring way or um, uninformative. Structure. Structure, routine, and you can actually thrive. Creativity can thrive with these kinds of um, platforms. Totally. It's so true. Yeah, well, that's why I make the mats classes like that. I want to teach you how to break it down for yourselves. So when you get that gig, you, you're not like, oh, my God, I have to do this X, Y, Z. Okay, I'm going to do my sketches of the subject matter. And I'm going to pick my favorites, and I'm going to compose it. I'm going to do a rough and show the client and then go to finish. So that's awesome. Okay, shall we look at some work? Yes, we shall. So I'm going to share my screen and let's go over here and let's go over here and let's go over here. Okay, good. So you can see that, um, let me move this over. So that is some of her incredible lettering. And 
Um, whenever I put the screen share, I have to open the chat again. Isn't that funny? Zoom, if you're listening, can you fix that? <laughs> okay, so uh, let us dive in. So one of the things you said is, you. where did you live when you lived in New York? Did you say Brooklyn? Uh, I was in Greenpoint, Brooklyn for a year, and then I spent two years in the Upper East Side. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So which people watching, people, all of you listening, please draw people you see walking down the street, in cafes, anywhere, get realistic kind of people, uh, not realistic, forget I said that, get the details that you see on people. So your color is explosive, it's warm, it's rich, it's vivacious, it's, um, and you layer, you see how she layers. So she's got the wake, wake to make, and not wake to bake, no, wake <laughs> to make. And then behind, and then you have her behind that with the pencil on the left and the brush on the right. And then layered behind is this beautiful decorative motif. There are a few advantages of a piece like this. First of all, showing people is really great for your portfolio, showing lettering, but she, I, you know, we were talking in our staff meeting yesterday about with our newsletters, this little inside bit, you know, we could target our newsletters to advertising, to card and stationery, to home, to a uh, bolt fabric, for instance. But in reality, a piece like this works for editorial. It works for book covers. It looks like a book cover. Um, advertising, but a bolt fabric client company can see this and go, let's have her develop a whole line based on these wonderful motifs and icons, uh, which is in boot camp. By the way, today is the last day to sign up for boot camp. If you're not, get yourself over in that class. It's really a great one um, and great for all levels. So that's one uh, what I love about this piece. Okay, talk about abundance, giving a ton. Like this is not something she just knocked off and like, here you go. No, this is like, I want to crush it. I want to give a lot. There are four people. There's tons of decorative motifs. There's lettering, it's gorgeous, the design. Like I know all of you watching, you're just still staring at it and staring at it and seeing more and more, like here's a watering can and here's a raccoon and there's so much, another different watering can, so much, yes. Oh, somebody said, was this her uh, GTS submission? Was it? It was, that was for one, year, one of the years, yeah. Did you make the top 50? No. <laughs> What is the matter with me? No, it was really tough. You probably were 51. Seriously, I mean, this is amazing. I don't know how, yeah, I, I'm like. I'm here now. Don't You're here now, right. It all worked out. And see, that's persistence. That's persistence. She didn't go, what? She didn't like this? I hate Lila, she's mean. <laughs> No, it's like, you don't know people, you don't know what people are thinking. If it's like, maybe I was looking for more children's book work at the time, or maybe I was looking for um, less graphic and more smushy paint, like you don't know, but it's not necessarily, obviously not a reflection on, on Kay, cause she's here now. <laughs> Um, and she has her name very legible. Yes. Uh, Lauren says, honestly, it's more inspiring to hear that you didn't make it right away. Inspiration to keep pushing through. No one makes anything right away. I've never made anything right away. What is right away? I don't even know what that means because you, you'll be have, you will have been thinking about being an illustrator before you even are. And then you make work. Um, you know, anybody who opens a shop, I always liken it to open a shop because people understand that metaphor. So you have to plan a bit and think about it and make a, like what your aesthetic's gonna be, get your funding or save up your money, locate a spot, a, a work with a real estate agent before you even open the freaking store, okay? And then 
you got to promote it and then you got to get people in there and you go buy all the products for it and get the products and unpack them and style them. And still you haven't made any money. So it takes time. Does everybody get that? Okay. You're always planting seeds. So I planted this seed and yeah. When I would cry and call my mom when I was an illustrator, she would say, honey, you're sowing seeds. Oh yeah, that's lovely. Exactly. Oh, it was good. Anonymous attendee asks in the Q and A, is this digital work or painting? It is digital work. Yeah. iPad. iPad. Do you curl up? Where do you work? Do you curl up on a sofa? No, I actually have a standing desk and I work there. Wow, <laughs> standing desk. Yeah. I just always felt like I'd always want to be sitting down though. Yeah. I no, I should try it. Yeah, I'm a runner and I've had some like oh. running hip uh, issues that I'm recovering from. So my trainer recommended I try a standing desk and it's been awesome. It took time to get used to standing for hours, uh, but you build like anything else, you build up an endurance and now I prefer it. Yeah. That's so interesting. So you have really good physical health care, health wellness care. Um, and yeah. I know, like, I work out three times a week and then dance on the other days. Oh. And it's really, really, like, I would rather just sit. I like to sit, you know? I like to sit and, nice. and be on my computer or read or listen to a podcast and do stained glass, you know? like. And But um, I want to tell you that the way, you, believe it or not, this is not what you're going to expect, but the way to have a great career is stay really physically active get your physical health together i agree activity right and you're a runner and that's where you have all this energy it gives you energy and clear mind that's why you need to um that's why people you need all that because it's going to give you a good you know i do it for my mood and energy and my super hot bod no <laughs> that's not why but Anyway, so back to her art. I cracked myself up. Okay, this was for boot camp. Let's see, I have a note. Let's cook at home tonight. I love these colors. Boot camp, yeah, 2019 boot camp. Last year, no, two years ago. Two years ago. I love this. I like. I probably wanted to take you on then. Here is two years later. It's just, we, you know, we can only take on so many people. So we have, you know, okay, let's talk about this piece. The colors are so cool. Look how she has diversity in her palette. Let's go back and look, look at that. Lots of warm, warm, warm colors. This is cool, cool, cool. So she has diversity because you don't know who's, let's say this is for a book that has a little more the book cover and it's a bit more wry, wry humor and maybe more edge. Um, maybe this is going to be for a book on um, positive attitude affirmations. You see what I'm saying, people? Yeah, but it's Emily Ellen says, but it's always so cheerful. It It's uplifting. It, it's appealing. I think the word I might use is appealing. So she's got great characters. She really understands. Oh. And we talk about this we, in boot camp. I do graphic novel page a lot in boot camp. Um, and she has the various shapes and sizes, the horizontals, the skinny verticals, the rectangular. Here's a close up from upper. So we're looking down on these people from up. Here we've got this sort of side view from wherever of and the guys cropped off. Here's a cropping, very a close up. That's one of the things you do in a graphic novel page. You um, alter the viewpoints, like editing it for a show. Yeah, I love it. Did you have fun doing it? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. What did you like about doing it? I liked what kind of what you just touched on the different angles a lot of times if you're making one piece it's the one angle one point of view but with this it was really fun to to picture the viewer looking at at, at the scene from the top and then the close-up so I thought that variety was uh really fun 
I love too the Let's Cook at Home Tonight in the upper left. That's a book cover. Yeah, that's a recipe. That's an editorial, a, a page in a magazine uh, for the headline or full page. So it's all very applicable to everything. Okay, so this is for my story, I Paint Purple from Illustrating Children's Books, my class I teach with Zoe Tucker, the wonderful art director. Um, I just finished writing my story, by the way. That class starts in mid-April. I wrote my little story. It's also nutty. And Zoe just sent hers over, and they're gorgeous as usual. So beautiful. Um, so I was crazy. When was this? Was this? This was last year. Look how she has her notes. She's so on the ball. You know, I'd be like, I don't know. Uh... Oh, it was last year says, oh, the student, the oh, yeah. people in chat are saying last year. So she did this. I was nuts about it. But, you know, I do run these two businesses. So I like I didn't have the bandwidth to take her on. But she was top in my mind. I will tell you something else. Kay is very good about her newsletters. She sends newsletters. I couldn't. So she was top of mind, which you and I and Kim had talked about before we went live today. So you stayed top of mind in my mind. Very good. And she always sent lots of great new work. How often do you send your newsletter? I know they all want to know that. Every two weeks on the 1st and the 15th. Love that. And they, make um, good, they make good check-in, like personal check-ins, because it motivates me, like, well, I got a newsletter in two weeks, I need to make some work. So it's actually really kept me in check in that way. And some, and Teresa Smythe says, what do you write in your newsletters? Um, I, it's usually a mirror of my Instagram. So just short stuff, like, like for this, for example, I would say, uh, I made this for Make Art That Sells course, illustrating children's books. I'm having a great time. Simple. So it doesn't have to be, right. you know, like reinventing the wheel. Just kind of even one or two images to show that you're making work and that you're like, oh, it was raining today. I drew this vase, something like that. I totally agree because I'm not taking on people for their writing. <laughs> it's nice if it's charming. Um, yeah. Uh, somebody said, is it, would it be, uh, Linda Graves said, would it be reasonable to take the children's book class even if you're enrolled in boot camp? Yes, because boot camp is much easier and it's not going to take you as long. You have a month to do the piece. So the answer is yes. We thought about that too. Like, could people do both? Yes. And we only do illustrating children's books once a year and that was uh, the best time. Hi Oliver, Oliver in Q&A writes, Lilla, you re on a recent Zoom session, you reacted to Kate only using Wolf on her signature as opposed to her full signature. I thought it was cool like Sting or Shakira, but you seem to prefer a full name. Can you elaborate on the topic? Okay, Kate, Kate you go first. Well, okay, so uh, I thought the shorter version of my name from my last name, Wolfersberger, not full, would be easy to remember. But Lilla brings up, brought up this great point, And now I'm switching back over to using my full name because of the searchability. So mm -hmm. if you Google Wolf, you yeah. get like a million plus answers. But I really recognize the logic in that. And so I think now it's important to use my full name, Wolfersberger. Uh, so I think people will find me easier that way. Absolutely. And when they do Kay Wolfersberger, they're going to find you. Um, absolutely. It's a brand name. It's your brand. Yes. Brenda Harris says, I love your last name. Very memorable. It is. Um, I do recommend that. So when you look at this, she did this make the review in class? Probably. It did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the kid is great. I love the kids' clothes, the pockets, the backpack, the watercolors, of course, the art she's doing, the lettering, the turn of the face, the, f the face is turned, and <laughs> the eyes are symmetrical. They're this, they are the same. One isn't higher or crooked or lopsided. 
very important. Things like that can make or break you getting a job with a client. They don't want a face that's like anatomically messed up. So it's very neat and careful that way. The, the, the midline of the face, the, the forehead, the nose, the mouth are all on the, a line together. They're going in the right place. So she's technically accurate and that's important, but it doesn't mean she's drawing like Rembrandt. She's doing her thing, very accessible, very age appropriate. The story is all about this kid just paints purple, doesn't use anything but purple. And the mom is like, how about you try other colors? And she's like, well, why? I don't want to. And she's like, well, the mom is like, well, there's all different colors in the world. And she's like, yeah, but no. Yeah, but no. <laughs> it's very me. It's very oppositional. <laughs> very oppositional. Um, so yeah, and the next one is a like an eccentric kid too. So I love this piece. It's it's irresistible. Notice too the white and black of the eyes draw you right there to the focal. That is the focal point, a main focal point. She's got several secondary and tertiary focal points, but it you know you're drawn to the face very quickly because of the 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 tan color of the skin. It contrasts well with the white of the eyes as well. So that that contrast and this line here brings us to the eyes. She knows what she's doing. The girl knows what she's doing. Okay, tell us about this. Uh, these were support graphics for our character Izzy in the previous page. So you'll notice her backpack, it's made a, um, another show in here. And these are things that I feel like this was a prep or a mini and actually started with this piece first to create the identity for little Izzy that we that we see later. It's such a great thing that you did this. It's a warm up. Again, the more, you know, method acting, right? Method acting, you get into the role. Yeah, you think exactly. about, you know, I, I, I've been obsessing the office, um, the oral history of the office podcast. And it's like with the producer and the casting director and the making and trying to sell the pilot and everything. I love it. Um, and they had the, the director had all the office actors get, go into the office a half hour early and do office work. Make calls, <laughs> use white out is what Pam said she did. Um, what are they doing? They're getting in character. I want you to get in character when you do a piece. And this is what Kay has done. Beautiful and your colors. Oh my God, the magenta and the purple. Okay, and here's her cover. Here's her page. So this is what you do in the Illustrating Children's Book class. You do, um, you do one week you do the cover, one week you do poses. And we help you, don't freak out. And then this, and you redid this, right? Tell us that, how you did one thing and then you were in the review, I think, and we made some, asked for some changes and you made those changes. Will you tell us about that? Absolutely, uh, for two of these pieces. So the cover, I paint purple, um, that made the review, but they had, uh, Zoe and Lilla had some comments about, um, I think I made, <laughs> it looked like, dark and murdery, I think, with the dripping paint from the piece. So I went back and softened that up a little bit. And then um, she, I needed to update some of the features on her face. So I corrected that. And this is the piece after the corrections. Uh, the piece below it is my double page spread. And before um, Lilla's comments were that it looked a little empty, the scene. So I ended up going back and putting in um, more details, like the guy walking across the street. In the I place. love him. I know, I love him too. And uh, some more detail, like plants on the windowsill, um, the lady in the top left with her little shopping bag, and then we've got the dog walker more in the foreground. So I went in and put more, uh, just more. Oh, dog that. walker. Where's the, oh, the lady in the shopping bag here? Yeah. Yeah. And then the lady in the orange skirt next to her. So I ended up 
going revisiting the piece and I completely agree it needed it just needed more uh, to enrich the scene because when well first of all you're you do characters so well you're you know you are all casting directors you are <laughs> casting directors you are casting for your scene think about it and you know like there's this guy and there's this person and that guy you know every, when a child is looking at a book and a, an adult or someone older is reading to them they're staring at that page for minutes, minutes and minutes, and minutes, and they want a lot to look at. And the adult wants to look at things too. You know, this truck with, uh, I, I like, you're a stylist, you are a location scout. Everything that's done in a movie, you are doing. You're getting a location, you're casting the people, you know, mm -hmm. and then you're drawing them. I know I love this. I saw this again. I was like, I got to take her on. And then I'd get busy and then you'd send me a newsletter and then. <laughs> Hello, remember me. Hello. Oh my God, I love this. This maybe sealed the deal, but I think I've been saying that with every piece. Um, <laughs> I love this because this has a different edge to it. It's, um, it's not witty and charming. It's beautiful um but it has more heft to it it could be more serious for a cover uh that has more depth or an article um the people are beautifully drawn the colors the texture she gets i love the lettering puerto rico bodega beautiful sliced bacon was this for west side story uh um, that assignment in boot camp yeah Bootcamp 2020. I bet it was, I bet it was, was it West, West Side Story for like, uh, yeah, it was probably the warm up of drawing things from the, the 50s in New York. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Sliced bacon. She got reference, you can see. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, it's amazing. She can do this all in a, an iPad. <laughs> Yeah, it took me about a year to switch from traditional media to the iPad, but but now I can't imagine. It's so not having the iPad. It's so easy, so much easier to do uh, changes, edits. Uh, yeah. Is that why you like it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it's the, so easy. The quick quickness. Yeah, it can crank out pieces or make changes, and that I. That's really appealing. That's so great. I mean, and you can do it anywhere. You yeah. can do it like on an airplane. Yeah, like, exactly. Once that happens again. Mm -hmm. Okay, loved this. Love this. The typography, the, his caramel color skin tone is gorgeous with the pink cheeks, um, the fluffiness of the beard. And look at this background. So this could really get you card work, and it probably will. Um, it's great. OK, tell me about Dumpling Night. I did this piece for one of my clients, Fox and Fig Cafe. It's a vegan cafe here in Savannah, Georgia. And uh, they were having a dumpling, a special dumpling night, and they wanted to promote the event with an image. And so I did some sketches and landed here with this little weightlifting box. That's and, so great. Yeah, and here he is. And it's really appropriate for a, a local independent cafe. It's like random. It sort of doesn't make sense, which is very cool. You know, it's like, it's cool. It's plain old cool. Yes. Love it. Look at her color palette. She's got like, let's say two shades of purple, the cream and the ochre and the black. Really controlled. Tell us about this cool, cool project. Yeah, this was for a client in Brunswick, Georgia, uh, Wake Up Coffee Company. They came to me and wanted to refresh their brand. 
And I thought that this, uh, they're like sunshiny, fun. They're such a great group. Um, and their tagline is a coffee, a people shop that loves coffee. So they really focus on the people side of their business. And so I wanted to use like vibrant colors and fun icons to really convey um, the sense of community that they, they hold dear. And so we did a range of packaging as you can see, um, and then Java jackets, which is the little um, funny shape on the left side of the page here. Uh, they also make a product called cold brew, which is a type of coffee, type of brew method for coffee. And we did labels for that. And then they also do offsite events. So the bottom, the bottom left image is the cart that they'll take to offsite events to um, serve coffee. And your graphic design skills with the typography, but you've hand lettered mm -hmm. the type for Wake Up Coffee Company. And look how she, this is a straight line. This is on a curve. This is script. This is caps. And then a rectangle of color and the type reversed out. You know, those of you that have graphic design background, use that. Hand letter, first do it in, in, in typography, and mechanical typography, and then do it by hand. It's a great skill. They're just absolutely gorgeous and really, really great. Thank you. We'll definitely pitch these to all our packaging people. Awesome. Yeah, I know. It's going to get fun. Um, we have a bunch of questions. Don't forget, we have a giveaway at the end, so hang on for that. And um, tell us about this. We all know what that thing is in the middle. Yeah, last year, um, you guys put out the arty assignments. Uh, mm -hmm. I think they came out once a week, if I recall. Uh, maybe some of my classmates can help me remember that. But they were questions like, what, what are you scared of, you know, when we were about right now? Or how are you coping? What do you look forward to? I think I have a piece later on, like, what are you looking forward to when we go back to normal? Mm -hmm. So this was my response to one of those, speaking on my kind of my fear about if we don't mandate masks, like, will more people get sick? And so it's just kind of like a fear driven, I feel small. Um, oh, yeah. Depiction of, of my of my anxieties at the time. Oh, I like that. I like that. I'm glad you just you, you explained it more fully. That's wonderful. Okay. Gorgeous. <laughs> Tell us about this. This one is, let's see, this one was boot camp 2018. This was a warm up, a stitch in time saves nine. I love that phrase. Yeah. And, um, I think you asked us to make, to uh, draw sewing motifs. And this was my response to that. That's great. Um, notice how evenly spaced and mos I call it a mosaic -y format. Like if this is the grout in between, you know, it's all even things are placed so beautifully. Um, so are you an earth sign or what you love organization? Are you Capricorn? What are you? Taurus Virgo? Aquarius. Oh, okay. No, no. I bet you have, you must have earth, a bunch of earth signs too <laughs> in your chart. Okay. Gorgeous. Um, uh, creating collections for home decor course. Nailed it. Mm -hmm. 2016. Yeah. Beautiful. So beautiful. Um, one of the things we talk about in there is very, don't plop the same thing on every different product because mm -hmm. the art director knows how to do that. The art director wants to see, give me a lot of stuff that I can then put on my product line. Oh, thank you, Emily Ellen. That's sweet. I am crazy about this one. Then I saw this, I'm like, I got to take her on. <laughs> That's really true. See, you don't know people. You don't know what I'm thinking and other agents out there. Oh, Kim, will you pop up the poll? We forgot the poll. Well, we didn't forget it. You're still here. So um, let's pop up the poll for a minute and, and Kay and I will drink our beverage. A little drink break. <laughs> 
What's that? A little drink break. Drink break. This is when I go to Bermuda um, every year with my girls. And um, this is the mug they gave us. And of course, we haven't been able to go in ages. It's just a little background, you know, just a little behind the scenes kind of stuff. Hey, Kim, are you, can you pop up the poll? Yeah, it's up. Can you not oh, see it, it is up. I'm sorry. There it is on my other screen. Okay. Oh, look. Yeah, they've already gone crazy. Good, good, good. Yeah, because I want to see um, how, like, we've got art directors and designers here. And um, so, and what industries do they work in? A whole range. And okay, wonderful. Um, I want to, we'll, we'll answer some questions in a minute, but I just want to get back to this really gorgeous piece. Look at how much she gives and look how everything is thoughtful. There's no, well, this is really beautiful, but I just knocked these out and didn't really, they're not that great. No, everything is at a high level. Um, Emily Allen, yes, uh, you can, we have a lot of students from the UK. She asked, would I be able to do a course from the UK? Um, doesn't matter. And in fact, most of my, uh, I usually do the Zooms at noon so that it's good for West Coast, US, East Coast, and um, some of Europe too. It's not the greatest for the Australians, but you know, I'm only human. Another gorgeous one with for home decor. And what's great is like, yeah, this is gorgeous. Yeah, this is gorgeous. Yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous. What the heck? That's so amazing. Delight the viewer, the art director. Make art for the kinds of jobs you want to get. You know, and if you want an agent like me, you throw in the freaking nutty fox. Okay. <laughs> and the beauty it's all really great this is so beautiful we'll definitely be pitching these um fabulous fabulous and you know for so many of you graphic designers let me see in the poll are you all filling in the poll we have a lot of graphic designers here and of course a ton of illustrators and Matt students and art directors, creative directors. So your graphic design skill, I'm talking, it's, it's like really coming through. Her ability to iconogra iconographify, I'm making that up, like to that. turn into an icon, iconographify the shapes so beautifully. These, they're little icons of lusciousness. Look at that croissant. I've never seen it done like that. Wow, look at this. Oh my God, I'm nuts about that. Wow, I love that cake and the things in the middle. I just, don't you love this piece, people? So great, I love the little chocolate says Heidi, yeah. Oh, so great. I don't wanna turn the page. <laughs> I'll send you a print. Oh, I would love that. For me as an agent too, it's like, I need to get this on product. Like I need to. <laughs> okay, moving along. Fabulous, once again, fabulous. I'm gonna move because I want time for questions. Okay, you know, look at the color palette here, the blues and pinks, and then the yellow and aqua and gray. So fantastic. And the mouse coming out, really beautiful. Here we have, oh, the Jitna assignment. Will you tell us about this? Yeah, this one was warm up actually for um, illustrating kids books prep. So um, it was like the so, free mats prep. Yeah, Make Art Themselves put out uh, this cute picture of Jitna um, and, sh and they were like, where is she going? She's on a train, you know, go make up your story. And so, and there were other components to the warm up because somehow I put, where I live, we have like all these stray cats <laughs> for some reason. So somehow I took all those elements and mushed it into the story. 
of Jitna and her super cats. So it was a response to that warm up. Jitna is the Matt's manager over at Matt's. And so, you know, we thought we got a baby picture of the adorable Jitna. <laughs> and so that was that. And um, so you had your warm up ready to go. Mm -hmm. When you got I Paint Purple, you had your kid mm -hmm. ready to go. That's the purpose of why I do the mats preps, to prepare you for whatever class is upcoming. I love this kid. Um, what was this one for? This was my kid's book pitch last year. Yeah, last year. And what Oh, that class was so fun. I love that class. So similar to the other templates that we followed in class, um, you're doing this prep work and imagining your new character and your story. And then it all culminates. Like you've been chipping away, as we say. And then before you know it, you're like, oh, she's going to be a fairy. And that forest that I drew is going to be her background. And then you find it all coming together. So fantastic. Yeah, I remember this one in class when you held up the rock. I mean, we have a lot of people in classes, hundreds, but I remember the pieces, you know? It is, it's intimate in a, in a way. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell us about this. And there's, look at the angle. Look at this angle from way up high. And that guy, the way you have your people move it's very animated like the legs okay. are moving faster than the arms or something i think that's what's so funny like the arms are a little bit more like walking like they're not like this right this would be the right thing for how much his legs are going and i think that's what's so funny like that other guy you had walking across the street i think that's the humor okay sorry tell us about this Oh, sure. Yeah, this was that same prep that I think we did for Jitna, and it was draw the view outside your window. And so this is what my neighborhood looks like. And again, you see the cats <laughs> here um, making their appearance. Uh, but yeah, and so it was fun to, this is not the literal view out my window. So it was fun to um, kind of warp and distort my my actual view to create a more interesting scene. Yeah, warp and distort, I love that. So Riley, if you're listening, um, you know, I wanna tell everybody, Riley and I are doing a residency for artists. We do one every year, I, I do one, but this year, because Riley is now our toy and game agent who's created um, over a thousand toys and games in his career. Yeah, he knows everything. He's amazing. So I said, Riley, let's do the, let's have you do the residency for our artists this year, the artists I represent. And you're going to be there, right, Kay? I am. I can't um, wait. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so it's, it's going to be a week of the toy course, which we're offering in July. And the first time we're doing it, we're really excited. Riley and I have spent a billion hours on that course. We're obsessed. It's so great. And we like make all these wonderful nutty videos. And then Riley makes some too of just, well, I could go on. But what <laughs> Riley, why I asked you, why I called you out is, look, I like this street. It just makes me feel like there's like a game board like how she did the street and, and like the lawnmower man and <laughs> the fences and the building. Like I see a game, a toy, a game oh, board. Yeah. yeah. Martina's so looking forward to toy pitch. Yeah. I'm nuts about it. I'm nuts about that class. Okay. Don't forget today's the last day of boot camp to sign up. And then you have like how many weeks, 16 Mondays of, no, I think 18 Mondays. So something like that. Yeah. 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 So anyway, the residency is going to be amazing. Okay. Love him. I gave everybody a photo to draw and uh, the different interpretations. This was a guy from a, a clo men's clothing catalog and I really liked it. Then you did a beautiful job. Thank you. Okay, happy new year and happy holidays. Always great to have holiday stuff in your portfolio. 
So I'm, let's go back to, oh, I'm, I'm looking for my favorite. Well, I, that's tough. Anyway, here's a little rewind, <laughs> everything we've seen. And now I am going to stop the share and we're back here big in on your screen. And let's answer, let's have you answer some people's questions. So, um, Radha says, can Kay tell us how she balanced a full-time job and an art pursuit? Are you a full-time artist now? Great question. So balancing, is there such a thing? <laughs> um, it required uh, a lot of extra. So you're working your day job and maybe you're spending part of your lunch hour sketching or rather than watching TV at night when you're off your job, you're spending some time drawing. Um, I would, yes. I, yeah, I would get up early and I would draw before going to work. So it, at the time when I was fully employed, it was um, you make the time, you have to prioritize. It did, it did take sacrifice. It took not like, maybe I'm not going out with my friends. Maybe I'm, I mean, it wasn't, this sounds miserable, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is the same speech I used to give when I was an illustrator. Yeah, yeah. same, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. not every day has to be the same. So depending on maybe if you're working on a piece you want to finish that week, you really batten down the hatches and you don't go out with the friends or do the mm -hmm. thing. Then the week after you finish the piece, you take it easy a little bit. Uh, right now, I am in, still in between two worlds in a way and, uh, and I'm doing freelance graphic design for clients that I've had for a long time, like Wake Up Coffee and Fox and Fig. And there are a few more cafes here. Uh, that I still do graphic design work for, kind of a hybrid. So graphic design work and illustration. Uh, but it it's a hustle. But I, I love this way of life because I feel everything that I'm putting out there is contributing uh, to me and my life. And, and that's a personal choice and thought process because there are other people who want to work full-time jobs and there's security in that that is definitely valuable health insurance um yeah but for me personally i this feels like the best that hustle and that extra is the right uh lifestyle choice for me mm -hmm. i so beautifully put was that not beautifully put oh, thank you. i i liken it to a room okay we all get a room in other words and we all get 24 hours we all get the same 24 hours and seven days a week so what do you put in what do you take out if you're going to put in this thing something has to go out and it's the choices you make and like you said you'll do it in the morning you'll do it you won't just binge watch all day saturday you know you'll do smart you won't stay up till two in the morning and like drink a lot and then feel crappy that next day and not be able to create work so you you make these choices you take care of your health so you can produce and it does get easier then when so in the beginning it would take me forever to do a piece of art and then I'd be like second guess and is it any good and I don't know and then over time it's like yeah this is really good I know what I'm gonna do I do it and I'm really happy and I'm like wow I really not every time but mostly it's like, yeah, this is great. And I really enjoyed it. It's just so much easier. And know that I really want you to know that like you're only a beginner for a short period of time. And then it's really easy to make your do you find that now? That yes. it's like, you know, it's going to be good. Well, <laughs> there's definitely you can't that. answer that. Oh yes, I know. every project where I'm like, ah! <laughs> and then I trust the I trust the routine that I've created. You know, I trust I trust that I'll get on the other side and I'll I'll like what I've made. So, yeah, yeah. See her great attitude. That's key. Um, Brenda Harris says Kay is very inspiring. She really, really is a great role model. Oh, thanks, Brenda. Great. Janice Harper says, how do you specifically protect yourself from burnout? I don't get the feeling that you go to burnout. Great point. Uh, I try not to. I still fall victim to it. Um, it is difficult. It's difficult to make sure uh, you're being a 
human being, you're eating properly and sleeping and exercising. And I find those components actually inform my art career kind of like Lola was speaking out earlier, uh, better than all the hours that I put in drawing. Like if I'm not um, well slept or have eaten food that my body feels good on um, or taking time off, it then uh, the art side really suffers. Yeah, so. I could only do my art during my best energy. Mm -hmm. Like what, if I was tired, I could not do a good piece of art when I was tired. I wouldn't even try because it would just be discouraging. Yeah, and so it, it is hard. I was joking about the balance. What is that before? But um, you, I find I am always teeter-tottering to like, I have too much and then I need to back off. So a lot of it is stepping away too. And I'm still trying to determine this, what to uh, eliminate or reduce in my life uh, mm -hmm. to make sure that I'm feeling pretty, you know, on point most of the time. I think that's all we can all ask for is, okay, I'm gonna do my best today with the tools that I have. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we all have to make decisions about what we wanna spend time on. And my advice, um, having my two businesses, um, and I really try not to go to burnout, um, is delegate everything I possibly can um, and if you can employ anyone to do anything, you will make more money doing your work uh, and it'll give you time. Even if you don't have much money now, just do try to delegate and let go of. Um, so you're really working, you know, what would a hotshot executive level person do? They would prioritize. So do that. Okay, um, Damjani says, Kate, everything you say is gold. It deserves a quote book for artists. And Brenda Harris said, and I screenshotted this, so we have this later. So many quotes, Kate, compound interest, focus on the present, be your version of brave. I love that, be your version of brave. You're planting seeds. That was also my mom. Trust the process. So um, I screenshotted that, but I think we should talk about you um, working on a book. Mm. I think we should talk about you working on an interactive journal. Cool. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And Erica Root, I know Erica, you're here, right? Um, has just uh, her first book that she wrote in Illustrate that I represent, and I represent Erica for those that don't know. Her first book, Erica, give us the name of the book in, in the text and a link to where they can pre-order. I think it's out, uh, out in April. Yeah, I think that would be great. I'd love to work on that with you. That would be great. Because you're right, people. She is inspiring and she has a lot of good stuff to say. And then if she illustrates it, are you kidding? What do you want? in her book this she's going to do this i'm making her do this Ready? so let's go what is her book going to be and didn't we talk about another idea earlier that we, we did yeah um you gotta make don't help <laughs> um erica root's book is a year of weeks 52 weeks of trying new things and here is her link so you can click on that um and order it it's absolutely inspiring and wonderful so yeah we should talk about that about um you doing a book that would be really really wonderful and that other idea i had but you don't have to do it oh i love it yeah no i love the idea okay well book <laughs> fine with me yeah. on my on my link book book on my link okay uh, and out end of April, right, Erica, says Kim. Yeah, that's so great. It's really great. Okay, we have time for a few questions, and then we are going to do the giveaway. Do you want to just hold up? Are you giving away all three, or did they pick one? All three. Whoa. I think this one might show up backwards, but it says... Come. No, it's forward. Oh, forward. Oh, good. It okay. looks great. And then we've got retro cups here. Love. 100% cotton. 
And then of course, that's gorgeous. Yeah. Kim, we've got a picture to bolt fabric, but you already probably are planning that. Everybody's going crazy. So we'll do that in a sec. Um, Emily Ellen Illustrator asks, I would like to know what an illustrator's CV needs to look like. I never, as an agent, look at a CV. And years ago when I was an illustrator, I didn't have a CV. I would have a bio and now I have a bio and you can have a little bio on your website, but an agent or an art director wants to see your work, maybe your client list if you have one. Um, Kay's client list is relatively small and regional. That didn't stop me because I know she's got the chops. Um, and I know she, for seeing her in class too, I knew she could deliver. Um, but you don't need a CV, Emily. Isn't that great? And you don't need to take the GRE. You don't need to, I, you know, it's great. No more tests, baby. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, this is kind of interest. No, let's go down here. Um, <laughs> Oliver says, okay, you went to a highly reputable art school, yet you give a lot of credit to Matt's. Not surprised. Can you talk, I love to hear that too. Can you talk a bit about the difference between what art school prepares you for versus what Matt's prepares you for make art that sells? Yeah, sure. Well, I really loved going to SCAD and the foundation elements at the time you aren't appreciating. Why am I doing all these still lifes? Why am I learning color theory? And that set a really great foundation. Of course, I'm biased because I've had both experiences, the university setting and the make art that sells uh, setting. The significant difference to me with, with make art that sells is that if you're an illustrator and you're wanting, or you're an aspiring illustrator, uh, you, you know the focus already. So in art school, you may not know your major. So they're buckshotting information at you in the beginning so you can understand the foundations and shape perhaps the, your major, which you'll determine later in the university setting. So again, back to make art that sells, um, it's, le it's really preparing you to be a working illustrator. So you're, you've already determined your focus you learn the basics about for that exact industry illustration. Um, and so if you are interested in pursuing an illustration career, not that parts of art school are uh, not meaningful or don't have value, but you've already narrowed down, oh, I wanna be an illustrator. I just need to know how to learn the industry and keep drawing and learning motifs and what's like working with a client. So it's really pared down and focused mm -hmm. uh, how to prepare you to be an illustrator. Oh, I like that. That's really well put. Yeah, I mean, I have two art school degrees. I love art school and I'll never say anything negative about art school because I love art school and I love maths and maths um, gets you work. Yeah. Whereas art school doesn't always because you can get out and I see so many artists work, but it's not appropriate for making money or commercial work. So that's what it does. Okay. Um, uh, oh, Laura Carrillo says, Kay, how did you build your newsletter in the beginning as a newbie? How did you get people to opt in? Let's see, well, I built, I was building it on software um, called MailChimp and then Squarespace, who hosts my website, came out with newsletter software. So I just make them in Squarespace, their little marketing tool that they offer. And uh, what was the other part? What do I put in there? How did you get people to opt in? Oh, sure. I have a field on my website that says sign up for my newsletter. And mm -hmm. the subscription list is not very big. It's 40 people. But what I love about newsletters is that it's targeted. You're already speaking to people that are interested in what you have to say. Mm -hmm. so even though that list is small, I'm speaking directly to, uh, to my interested demographic and there's so much value in that. 
So, I mean, yeah, <laughs> there's, um, it, it did feel tedious at times, but like anything it, now I'm just like, oh, it's the 29th of the month. I gotta put my newsletter together. So okay. even though it was, it was tedious and difficult and felt insurmountable kind of in the beginning of putting these newsletters out. Now, now I'm like, okay, gotta get ready for my newsletter. It's a part of my routine. Again, back to that, that routine. Um, and I, I don't know, what do you all think? But I don't think like, I think you can just put some people on. Does everybody have to opt in? They do. They do. Yeah. Only order to give you expressed permission somehow. Uh, mm -hmm. In MBA, you have given verbal permission, which is still squirrely. <laughs> you should really get people to opt in, Wait, but I jumped in. What that. is that? I said that again. We, you had you had given permission in MBA at one point to oh, put, did I? Okay. Yeah, for, to send you newsletters, and that's when I was like, I'm going to send her those newsletters. <laughs> but you really should uh, have people opting in, and that is typically a part of newsletter software you can go in okay. and say i want people to opt in so okay how many maths classes have you taken k oh man i don't 10, 10 i mean i don't even know like at least 10 and then i would always do the free stuff like yeah holidays do a christmas card or like last year the arty assignment i mean just eat it up. I mean, they are just giving it away. So no excuse. <laughs> um, yes, Teresa Smith, you can send me your newsletters. Oh, very good. <laughs> there you go. You can. Um, and don't have to write out a whole big thing. I'll look at the art quickly. I won't write back. So don't be upset. Okay. Thank you. Because I have a billion jillion emails a day okay um and last question leah quinn what kind of digital brushes do you use oh i use gosh not very exciting ones i don't ever download extra i use um like 6b pencil the paint and paint section watercolor and like drawing one of the big black brushes they're all the default like included brushes. Yeah, appropriate brushes that are included wow see that there you go people um too bad you don't have an affiliate link on here to like get all the people gonna buy like appropriate an ipad i know right i know it's uh, like you make me want to get mine out and use it again <laughs> but so i i used it for a while and i loved it because after all my years of like setting up my oil paint, I did a lot of illustration and oil paint. If you can believe that crazy stuff. And then FedExed it to the client. Oh man, stressful. <laughs> yeah. But you know, you set everything up, but it's beautiful. I mean, oil paint is gorgeous and the paints and the textures you get, it's just really like that is incredible. However, then once I started, and Kate Mason, one of my artists, when she came out for the retreat, she would stay with me because she came from Australia. And so she got to stay early, you know, my house a few days. So before the retreat, and we'd sit and watch TV and she showed me her iPad. This is several years ago. I'm like, oh my God, like, and she showed me this oil paint app thing. I'm like, this is crazy. This is so good. And it looks like oil paint. So you know it's pretty great yeah um yeah the industry has evolved that's for sure uh mahira yeah okay so let's do our giveaway um i know this is so fun i'm just thoroughly loving this k thoroughly Thank loving you. it um so we will so you all saw the beautiful uh tea towels love that here's how you win i will say a category <laughs> no it's not chartreuse i will say a category and the first person that kim or i see with the correct answer or even k um will then win and it goes quickly so we might not see the very first one we will try but um 
it's the first one that we see that we can get our hands on. The category is a favorite color of K's, a favorite color of K's. And I will tell you it's two words. It's always going it's two words, it slows people down. <laughs> you see, they paused for a minute. They're like, oh. What is it? Oh, there we go. Oh, there was. Stop, stop, it was stop. abbreviated. Yes, Dennis Harper, cadmium red. Mm -hmm. Cadmium red here, proof. <laughs> Like he wouldn't trust me. I make it up. Okay. Yay. Oh, that's wonderful. So um, write to info at lillarogers.com. Info at lillarogers.com, Janice, and give us your address. Where are you what country are you located in? Oh, she collects tea towels. Uh, Teresa right, says, Can we buy one? Yes, on your website, on your Etsy. Etsy, correct. Etsy, K. Wolfersperger with the P. Um, good, it was meant to be, says Brenda. Um, where, what country? Oh, she's in the USA. Okay, what state? Georgia. You know her? Oh, no, I'm sorry, Janice. Oh, Janice, what state are you in? <laughs> like, she. <laughs> moving to. From Texas to Oklahoma right now, she puts in all caps. Oh my God. Oh, oh, me. Yeah, that is fantastic. Thank you so much. This was absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so good. So good. I'm sure everybody, it was very meaty. And we have to talk about your book. So schedule a time with me whenever you're ready to chat about that. Absolutely. And, um, Thank you everyone so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Kay, when is our next webinar with and with whom? Uh, next week with Erin Vanessa, March 11th. Wonderful, same time, same bat channel. That's right. <laughs> um, so yes, we will see you there. Today's the last day to sign up for bootcamp. Please do that, you will not regret it. It's great for your career or just for your art joy. Thank you, everybody. And we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.